Hello my fellow fans and loyal friends and all that. This is Design David talking to you from my house, my lovely home in Texas. And today I am going to show you and demonstrate how to do your own customized Five Nights at Freddy character. So let's get started. As you see basically here I have already constructed a basic shape of the head and eyes and nose or beak of the character I am about to customize and draw. And what I am about to design today is going to be a penguin version of a Five Nights at Freddy character. Now people may say I might rip off of the chica, the yellow bird, but no I will not. I will use both aspects from the first and second game to create my own customized character. So let's get started. First what you want to do, you want to create a circle head. Don't try to make it perfect because it's never going to come out perfect on the first try. Just do your best like outline sketch around. Same thing with the eyes, make sure you have two. Now for the nose, it's very important on which type of character you do. There has been some like Balloon Boy who has a triangle shaped nose or the custom new one that I have no clue what its name is. It's the face one with just the eyes and the smile. Looks like a mask really. But let's get started on the process of drawing the character. Now the important thing to draw on for a Five Nights at Freddy character is to make sure it looks animatronic, like a robot type of deal. But don't make it like Robocop or Terminator type of deal. Make it look like it was, you see, a pizza shop, which the game is based on. So what I am about to do, I'm about to construct a body. So for, there's two ways of doing it. One, you can do it like full fed um, pledge or anything like that such as you know no tears no wares or nothing just kind of dirty and stain type of deal or like foxy the pirate do some damage to it some exposed parts and all that and that's what i'm going to be doing today i'm going to do the exposed part because that seems a lot more fun to do if you see my other video of me drawing foxy the pirate that was really fun to do so for what i'm going to do i'm going to basically do an outline of the neck which is just straight you know two light type of deal and make sure you give it some lines within it just make it look like it's like stack on levels what you see in the game all the time with like with foxy or you know buying the bear or in that um that construction like room you see you know, all the parts to it so what i'm gonna do is gonna make the buy to it and probably in the process do the basic outlines of the arm what you're going to do when you design these things is you're going to do the chest which is very important for any character really and for any character in future on not just five nights freddy so let's just since this is going to be a penguin i'm going to make his body you know kind of like skinny at top but at the end of his body i'm going to like curve it, trying to make it fat and all that, like that. That's how I want it. That looks perfect. Now, for a penguin's body, it is got two layers of different color fur. You got your black layer and you got your white layer. And for time consuming, I'm gonna first do the exposed parts. Now, people usually ask me, David, why do you like, go ahead and put details in? Just so I know how to work around it. Because if you put all the parts in first, and then you're trying to put the details where you want it to be. That can work in a lot of cases, but some other cases it will not because you put some parts on it that were not supposed to go on first, but you were supposed to like work around it, really. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So I'm doing a wear and tear penguin version of like a foxy pirate. I'm gonna do some, you know, jagged lines to expose some of the metal parts. And then I'm gonna do some lines showing where his metal parts will be. Now this is an important part when you're doing, you know, this part, making the exposed part. Since you notice on Foxy, you see a lot of the, um, you know, all the pieces. You notice there's some empty space in there. When you're designing this, you gotta shade in the the parts that you're gonna color in black later. That's very important when you're doing this. Now when you're doing this, it doesn't matter 
how much wear and tear you show because in the game it's really just all wear and tear the characters were left in there from what I'm understanding since 1987 or a very long time over three decades I think so let me do some fur on this guy just do some fur on his chest as some indicate he does have fur not like actual fur but no fabric or something on him okay now I'm constructing the white part of his belly making it you know just you know just a little it can be either far away or next to you know your basic outline depending how far you want it to go it's your concept it's your constructing your own character you know as you're putting layers of color next is the arm since this is a ping one I want to give it flippers but on the flippers I'm gonna give him little fingers like little nubs and all that but first let's construct the arm when you construct the arm you're gonna to try to you know try and find your spot it can be anywhere from the middle of the neck right here or right here where the shoulder meets the neck now most people do with shoulder meets the neck but since this is like a cartoonish hellish creature or something I'm just gonna do this right where the neck is it seems more natural because it's you know the horror cartoon type of deal you no, know, it may not be the right uh, anatomy, but for fun sake, it's really fun to do that. You now just go wacky with it. So I'm going to do that. Make another piece. When constructing the arm of a Five Nights at Freddy character, it's really important to make their body look, you know, uh, pieces. Uh, what I mean by that is, you know, just you know, separating basic shapes. Because that's all an animatronic is, it's just basic shapes with fur over it. So I'm going to expose some of his fur and his exoskeleton. There we go, I got it right this time. And made that piece. Now when constructing an arm, there are three parts to it. There is your upper arm, your lower arm, and then your hand. And the hand... It is a very difficult process. I will show you all how to do that next time. Now, I got the flipper right here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to outline it with just three nubs. Since this is just a, like a cartoonish version of a Five Nights at Freddy character. You know, just give it like, not five fingers, probably four or three. You know, just to make it look presentable and more cartoonish. And, you know, if you go with five, that's great. You know, that's your choice. But here's the thing, never go with two or one. Two is a very rare rule that you go with. If the way you position the hand or the way you want it to look, depending on what type of character you're drawing. So you're drawing with it like a hoof character, like a pig or something, which is for another time. But for time consuming, I'm going to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it some, you know, some life and all that. So what I'm doing is right now is, you know, just giving him, same thing I did on the belly, a white and a black area to color in later. This side will be white, so I'm going to leave it by W so I know. And this one black, so I'm going to label that B so I know for when I color this thing. Okay, next thing I'm going to do, same thing on the side of the right hand side so basically you repeat the same way you want it now some people want to do their own poses so for time consuming wise I'm going to just go ahead and give it a waving arm so the way to do that is first you gotta pinpoint where you want your hand to be you know upwards you know you know when you're waving your hand or your put your arm at an angle and all that like as if you're trying to scratch your back or something you're trying to pinpoint where you want it so first what I do I make a circle where I want and where I basically want it is somewhere next you know symmetrical toward noses because that's really seems right to me really most of the time so what I do is I'm gonna pinpoint a dot where I'm going to connect the joints so what I'm going to do is and make the flipper and add nubs for his finger and make his hand 
draws a part that connects that part and this is where it's going to get a little tricky at some point now most people would think to go like that no do not do that because you want to give it depth go slant it a little bit that way you can see it you know as if it was real life you know like not say Freddy was real life but like as if you were drawing like a portrait of somebody. It's very important when you're drawing character pictures or full length figures for people. Remember not to just go straight along. Just try to add like depth to it. Okay. Now this is where it's going to get a little tricky. As you notice I have three pieces here. But I already have one, two, three already. So people are going to ask how you connect those two. Well, this is very easy. You just go like this. And part to that now it may not look right at first but wait till I color this thing in and we'll come all together like to get like a puzzle and I'm just gonna already right, give it like the split in where I'm gonna color this thing like go ahead and color it in the next process oh, that's supposed to be B okay next is the legs the legs is a very very key part of this whole thing because well legs, how these creatures move when you're playing the game in my opinion so what you're going to do is you're going to go straight down like say where the curves start going start curving around see the straight line when it starts going curve that's where you put your lines to make you know the pelvic area and then with a fine to fray character you're going to curve doesn't matter how far you make it down, just don't make it too far down where it looks kind of out of proportion. Then you're gonna go straight until you right about here, and then you curve right back up, connecting them all. It's gonna take some practice to get the way you want it, but it's worth it in the end. And the same thing with the arms, what you want to do is this one is a little bit different, but it's the same process. See, so you go like this and that's going to be part of the exposed you know I want this to be the exposed part of you know this character's leg and then I try to do that same thing again make it a little bit bigger and then boom you got a leg the next part you do the same thing but this one I don't want to have exposed I just want to have like a regular piece as if it had you know fur or fabric on it and then you do it same thing again you get down the leg but you go a little bit down and you curve outside further see how the difference is man I think I might want to you know expose just a little bit just because I want him to look like he's been locked up with the gang as well mostly with Foxy so you know as if he was buddies with Foxy which I don't think he will ever be because Foxy is a pirate and this guy I have no idea what he might be. Okay. Next thing is the face. Now, I already had constructed how to do the face already. Right? And sorry I did not, you know, record that. But, let me show you how to do the details on this character. Because the face is really what gets people. It's what scares people when they jump out. People think they're just jumping out. they scary. No, it's their expression they show that scares people. A little psychological term there or definition I don't know which in there so the way to do this is either two ways you can make like a small eyeball in there and color the rest of the area black or you could try to fill the eyeball in with a little black around since we're I'm trying to design something for this new game Five Nights at Freddy 2 I'm gonna go ahead and do the second one do a big eye with a little bit of black exposing now here comes the tricky part or to me it is is to choose the gender on this see the way it works is with these characters is you can do genders on these characters like cheek is a girl foxy bunny and freddy is our boys or i think bonnie may be a girl in the second one i have no clue so what you're going to do if you're doing the second type of the second game eyes is you're going to Trying to fill in the best you can around the eyes, but leave a little black out, like probably say a centimeter, 
round each for you know coloring the black in so it looks like they the eyes might pop out in any moment you know because I noticed that one of the new characters of Foxy 2.0 has a it's complete exposed and I think one of his eyes is falling out now for the eyes it's very important to give it expression so what you want to do is draw a little circle and draw a circle you know connecting it don't draw it around it draw it like from one point to the other point say one half to the other half completely 360 degrees and you're going to do it again but this time inside it except you drew the first circle so there you go you got your eye now for detail wise probably do a bigger circle probably around it give it some depth give it some lines in it make it look like it's an actual you know eyeball same thing with this one and then you know when you're doing these eyes this first circle you're making is the white part of your eye that you may see in anime and all that make sure they're in the same position don't make this one on that side then it looks like they might be cross-eyed a little bit unless you want that I'm not gonna stop you from doing that so same way make it second eye okay now you made this part now let me go ahead and define how big I would be and I go ahead and do that okay and what you want probably might do and you if this is optional you don't have to do it is to shade in the area where the blacks gonna go in the only reason I do that is when I color helps me know where to shade in the black you now whatever I have you know shade in like right here here or here on the legs arm and all that it shows me where when I color the stuff in, I'm going to put the black on. Alright, now for the beak. Since this is a penguin, I'm going to give it like two nostrils. Make sure they're like, um, like corner to corner, top corner, like as if they're about to touch at the corner. Like forming a, you know, 90 degree angle or something. And another thing that people notice about these characters are the teeth. Like Foxy has um, shark teeth, which may be the reason why they all got locked up due to that incident in 1987. And the other characters have buck teeth. Since I want this character to be sort of like Foxy, I'm going to give him shark teeth. So what you do is you go straight down and then you make a curve diagonally. You can do the same thing over and over again. Since this is a like a big B and I got big T I'm gonna do two on each side just to make it look proportional and even in a lot of ways okay now for accessories now a bunch of these characters have accessories Foxy has his hook and eye patch Bonnie has his um, you know bow tie Chica has her bib that says let's eat and Freddy has a bow tie and a little top hat so for this character, I want to give him both a bow tie and a little hat. So what I'm going to do is right here where the beak is, I'm going to make a circle. And then I'm going to do, what I do is, it goes diagonally, curve, and then diagonally back up. And you do the same thing on this side. So you get yourself a nice little bow tie. And for the hat, this is what you're going to need to do. You're going to have to race a little bit where you want the hat to be. It can be a, a slanted, it can be straightforward, or it can be backwards, you know. But for, you know, time consuming, I'm going to do a slanted. Now, the hat you choose uh, depends on what type of character this will be. Will it be like a fancy character? Will it be a hillbilly character? Will it be a idiotic character? Will it be just an average character? I want this guy to be, you know, sort of a idiotic character or a simple minded one. Another term for that is make it like one of those little baseball cats that kids wear, or what you see in cartoons, like a character has a big head and, you know, has a small hat on top. 
you know, sort of like that. So what you do is, you make a curve where the line still goes on after you erase this part. You go where the line starts it up again, and then you go curve, sort of like it's you're doing a check mark. Then you curve again, and you curve back around, but you stop right there as if you didn't like hit the halfway mark. You see how I hit the halfway mark? Yeah. Okay, what you're going to do for the little hand, you're going to go back a little bit as if you're making a straight line. And you're going to curve. And then you're going to meet it right here. Now, it may not look precisely good, but it's supposed to be fan made crazy and all that so what i'm going to do since this is supposed to be a goofy character I'm put a little dot as if it's a baseball cap string give it some propeller wings okay as if you were drawing like the hat to balloon boy minus a little scissors at top if you haven't seen that go check it out okay and then right here where you meet the curve you're going to draw the tongue of it up the tongue of the hat so you just go curve until you meet that point to that point so well, for let me let me fix the hat. Let me make it a little bit back. There we go. That's looks a lot better. See, it's all about trial and error. If you don't like something, that's why it's good to sketch these things out first before you go in with ink and all that. So that's about it for drawing your basic outline to your character. Now on to coloring. What you're gonna do when you're coloring these things, you gotta think of a color scheme. That will work with the game. Now, Freddy's brown, Chica's yellow, Foxy is reddish orange, and Bonnie in the first one is purple, and the second one is blue. So, if I'm doing this for the second game, I want it to be sort of like a. Um, so this is the pink one. It should be black and white and gray. So let's do that since I've already mentioned I'm gonna color it black and white. So, but instead of coloring pure black, I'm going to be using grays, different shades of grays. That's very important when you do it. And very important what type of gray you get, because there's two types, warm and cool. The difference between them is warm is sort of a, works well with like warmer colors like red and all that. Cool will work with blues, greens, and you know purples and all that. So that will work. But I'm going to use two, one or two colors, one from each side, like a cool 50% gray and a warm 60%. That way, in some areas, I can make it look more, you know, presentable when I show this to clients or all that. So, what first you want to do is, you know, start with the eyes. You know, I start with the eyes because, you know, I travel head to body. So, what I do is... And what I'm using is a Sharpie. You know, people think you're going to have one of those fancy markers like Copic or Prismacolors or Fabric Castle. No, you don't. Um, you can just pick up Sharpies and they work great. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do some detail work on the eyes. And the reason I start with eyes, like I said, I travel from head to, you know, feet and all that. So that's... Basically what I would do, if you want to start anywhere else, that's great, you know, I'm not going to stop you. If that's your choice, if that's how you feel comfortable, you know, doing this, more power to you, man, more power. Now, you see how I got it all lined up and you still see all this sh pencil. Work. So I'm going to take one of these erasers, you can pick them up at Hobby Lobbies and all that. I forgot what type of eraser these are, they're not needed, but, you know, they're... They work just as good, and I bought those at Hop, uh, not Hobby Lobby, uh, Office Depot, like four for four, so a dollar each, not bad. So I color this in, you know, just black, pure black. So, you no, know, see, you got the basic outline, and what you probably want to do for the center eye is color that black too, cause you know. That's how it knows how most of these characters will look. Far away, beady eyes, you know, just white eyeball with a black dot in it. Close up, like that. Do the same thing with this eye. You know, probably I'll just color that in as I go. 
So you do that. What you do is, what you basically do is just tracing. That's all you basically is. When you ink, you trace. Now, people say tracing and inking are the same thing. They are the same thing, but in other aspects, they are not. Because with inking, you will have to make the decision of either taking away or adding more. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about in here in just a second. As soon as I'm done getting this character's eyes. And probably just making his pupil a little bigger. You know, sort of like that. Okay. I travel to the beak. I'm going to go and follow it. Now, for what I'm talking about just a second ago, about adding and subtracting away. So I'm using math terms, but it's very important when you're inking the stuff. Either it be with Indian ink, or Sharpie, or pencil, like darken pencils, or you know anything that you will use in your final outline of everything, like I'm doing right here. So, let me show you what I'm talking about. Say if I do not want this part, and I'm not going to probably put this part of the handle, on, like the back of it. I want to look like it's all torn up, like as if it was, like, right away. So I just go around it and make the shapes I want, that I did not make originally. See how I did that? That's, you know, the subtracting part. And then I just, you know, come the adding part. I add more detail to it. See how I add all that to it? Make it look like it was just, it looks like as if it was punched on the inside or a bullet went through it and it came out. Which looks like I did not put the bullet hole into. So, maybe that was a wrong mistake or not. Let's see how this turns out. So, just fall. Okay. Then you make your circle on your tie. Follow the outline with your bow tie. Okay. Now I'm going to do the neck. Corner in the neck. And I'm just following every single piece of guideline I put myself. That's all basically a sketch is, is guidelines. When you do your final piece, you know where to put your black on top. When you're, you know, putting the whole thing together when you're just trying to finish it up. And that's what professionals do all the time. They're sketching now. Now, I know some people will go straight to ink, but that's only because they've been doing it so long or it comes naturally. I used to do that and it never came out good. That's why I like sketching things out because it helps me know where to make it. Say if you draw this in ink right now just without sketching it and you make a mistake, you can't erase it. You just can't. It's permanent marker. So you may have to start all over or work over it. Most of the time I will have to work over it. Say it was intended. For me to do that mistake. Right now I'm doing the body. Just following the guides. Now I'm just making the little wound or weathering of the suit away. And see this is where it comes in, like I said, with the black. I just color that in. And that's very helpful when you're doing this. So that way you know, you know, where the color in that black, where the shape fill in. Okay, making his little puppy fur chest. Okay, following the the um, pelvic area. That's right. That's what I called it earlier. Okay, following the belly of it. Okay, right there. Just fill that in. Okay, and I'm following back up to the body. Another thing I want to mention doing this is that when you're, you're like going straight up for like say over five seconds, uh, it will you tend to shake a little bit and you will 
kind of mess up your line. Say you want a straight line, but you see a little jackets in there. It's okay, you know, to stop. Pick up your pin, put it back on, and finish it out. That's what I do, and it helps a lot because I do know that when I do it, and I have noticed other people do that. Okay, film that in. Making his body you know, as completed as possible. I'm just following that. So, there we go. Filling in everything nice and perfect. Now, just to let you know, when you are inking, you're going to tend to make little mistakes. Don't worry about them. I sometimes do when it's for a client. But when I do it for fun, I usually tend to work around it. Which is something I advise, you know, young artists or learn to draw to do. You know, if you make a mistake, you know, you got to use two chop, uh, not chop, options. One is to start all over again. Or second, work around it. I advise working around it. Because that makes the piece more interesting when people look at it. Or clients look at it and if they ask you know what is this uh, it looks like it doesn't belong there you say that was intended it makes you look more professional like you knew what you were doing even though you knew just you personally it was a mistake and that's why I do with a bunch of my clients say it doesn't look gray or I put a wrong color somewhere I can say I decided to put it like that because it looks more cool or original like that. Okay, so we inked out the entire outline of this character. Next is coloring, which is my favorite part of doing that. Because you get to pop everything out, use different techniques when you talk about this. But the techniques I will talk a little bit about today and probably do a video over how to do them. Let's start with the arm because I got it labeled. Now, what you want to do, people will think, you know, if you're coloring, like, like, shadows and all that, you go straight black. If you're doing black and white, perfect. If you're doing color, not perfect. Or, you know, semi-perfect, you know. You know, if it calls for that. What you want to do is you want to build different shades or hues or saturation, I don't know the term, over it. So, what I'm going to do, since he is for... Since he is a pink one, I'm going to choose more of a warm gray 60%. What I'm going to do is I'm going to color all of it first. See, what you do is you put your lighter colors on top first before you do, you know, your dark colors. Say you put your dark colors first, try to build light on it. It's just going to look muddy or you can't even see your work. See, the way it works is... If you put your colors, you know, from lightest to darkest, it will, you know, build on top of that. See, the dark will just make the light darker than what the dark originally is. Say you got a, you know, a light blue, put that down first, and put dark blue on top. The areas where the dark blue and the light blue will mix will be noticed. It's just how, you know, you put it. Say if you're doing cross hatching or something like that, you know, that's be different. So, coming in with his, his armor or his fur, I don't know how they do this. And people ask me, David, do you play this game? To be honest, I never played this game before. Never played the first or the second. People call me a hypocrite for drawing these characters. I say, you don't have to draw, play the game, draw these characters. I don't think it's like a rule. If you like the way they look and you want to draw them, go ahead and draw them. You don't have to play them. I mean, I personally, me, I don't think it's a bad game. I just think I don't have the guts, you know, to finish it out. Probably one night. I bet you one thing. If I do play it ever, the first or second, I would freak out within the first minutes because I'm afraid I would die because I have seen gameplay my friends have shown me parody videos well done parody videos of anime versions of 
these characters and they still do the pop-up deal and it scares me that that badly where I don't want to play the game but I'm not being a total hypocrite saying it's a bad game it's one of the most popular games out there uh, kudos to whoever came up with it I think he was probably crazy in the head but hey aren't we all crazy I give him envy for that because if I would have came up with this idea I I would be making millions but this guy is making probably hundreds of thousands probably close to a million I bet okay I'm gonna do the head now with prison markers that's what I use nowadays besides sharpie and Copic marker they got two ends either a brush side or a chisel side and another side is like a you know, pencil side like this size so like a nub really and then you cut and just depends which marker you grab because at the store you need to pay attention which type of marker you're grabbing not color wise well probably color wise but what size are coming with it either because every single first marker is standard to have a nub side the other side is whatever they fail like you know putting on there you have a chisel or a brush now in areas like this where you got obstacles in your right like the eye it's really great to have a brush side that way you can go like around it see how I'm going around it you're doing with the nub but it would take a while okay well the chisel side is more used for wide range area let's say if I want to color this belly in I could just you know go outline around this piece and everything and then use a the chisel to go around it probably not go off the edge but you know when it comes to getting close to your outline that's where you use your nub so I'm just going to color this part of his chest in okay okay now you probably want to erase some of this uh, you know writing on here like the C and W I made earlier because you know that's probably the best thing to do next is the 50% gray this is where it comes in very importantly is on the robotics part that are exposed you want to color that in don't try to go outline I mean outline or no outside there we go outside of your coloring area that's why it's important to use the nub instead of you know your brush or your chisel all right unless you like I said you got a big range of areas and all that so coloring in his robotics part so and don't forget this arm so right now I got all the gray that I need for right now onto this character next is the black how i'm going to put the black on now the black is the trickiest part of all so what you want to do you want to think in your head where you want this let's start on this hand over here so say if i want you know this part to be black to go around but make it more you know presentable more like it was tin done or you know stacking colors that i was saying this is the lighter shade gray than the black. The black is the blackest of all. Sorry for that racial slur. So what you want to do, you want to go around, and then within the gray, you want to put some dots, a little bit. There you go. Make some funky shapes. Just fill in that gap. And when if you're doing like a black and white character, but you want to add gray. Try to like cover it with as much black as possible, but leave a little bit of gray as if it was intended, which it's supposed to be. Right there. See how I got the hand looking like that? So do the same thing for this part of the body. And then you color that in as much as you can. Don't color it all completely. Because it takes away from the point that you color it with a lighter gray. See how I did that? And I do the same thing. And you continue that out throughout the whole 
strong if you're doing a black and white character. Okay. So, so one more. And on the body, you probably just want to make like a thin, thin strip of it. Same thing on this side. So, there you go. Now that's a little bit bigger, so I'm just going to... Until it gets to your liking, really. It's all about your liking. If you make this for a client, and they don't like how you did that, you know, tell them off. Because, it really, it depends on the artist. If that person comes to you, draws it, what rights do they say, like, how it should look? I mean, like, they're paying you to draw what they see. But, you know, everybody got their own different ways, so if they don't like it, they should have done it themselves. Really, that's my opinion. If someone comes up to you to draw something, and they got a problem with the final product, no, they shouldn't have done it on their own. Because if that's not the way they want it, no, they shouldn't have done it on their own in the first place, just so it's the way they want it, instead of, you know, paying someone and then... No, I'm getting angry with them because it's not the way they want it. Okay, that was the eyes. Since I got the black out right here, what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to make a little, you know, hash marks all around the eye. Kind of like give it like a little space. That's what you did with the eyes, but around the eye, uh, around the, you know, the holes of the eyes. You go in, color it. And, you know, that's all you basically do. You know, you just go out and around what you already made. You know, and you just, you know, you just do whatever you feel like will make your piece awesome. Or, as I like to say, textify. Because I am from Texas. And that's not something every Texan will say. I think that's just something I say. <laughs> Okay, let's go to the legs. Okay, very important that you outline everything. So in case you have some jiggy or jacket lines, you just cover that up with a straight outline of it. So, remember to go along. Okay, and then you do that. You color this in some more. Probably I get a little more here, just to give it some depth. You know, just kind of color there. Okay. Let me do that. So you color in that some more. Now, when you're doing the black, it really depends how you see it or how you want it. See, this is how I want it. Because I want you know, to be a mixture of gray and black. So this is a black and white character. Now that we got the fur done, or at least the black part of it done, let's go to the accessory, the hat, the bow tie. So for you know, color wise, I want to go with a red bow tie. And just color that sucker in all the way. Just so people will know that's a bow tie. And it looks right. It all really depends on if it looks right to you. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the hat. Now you're probably wondering why not go with a different color hat. Like I said, it depends what if you think will look good with it. If you wanted to do a yellow hat, green hat, a maroon hat, I don't care. I mean, really, like I said, I can't stop you from your choices. So if you want to do that, you can do that. For me, I just wanted to go with, you know, Red bow tie, red hat, I'm going to in a little bit more. Okay, now for the eyes. Now each character has their own color eyes. Bonnie has green in eye. Freddy has brown eyes. Foxy has yellow eyes. And I think Chica has blue eyes. I don't remember that. But I want to give this character something that the color scheme will work together. So I'm probably going to give him a golden yellow eye. Or precisely a Spanish orange. They come up with funny names for these, I don't know why, but it's fun. And you can just color in where the lines are. 
that way you know where it is. Let's see like that. Now for the beak. The beak is you know, for a pink one is, you know, a thin strip of black with some orange or yellow around. But I'm just gonna do same Spanish orange on these nose and all that. So there we go. There we go. Now he looks great, but he's not complete yet. What do you think is missing? It's the white. The white is just white. It looks kind of dull. The black looks awesome. The red and everything else looks awesome. It's the white. Now, in some areas, white, just pure white, is great for negative space. But since we're doing like your own custom character, great then put some grays in there. So, what I'm going to be using is another color called Brick White. Soy gray and sore white. It's as if you took those two colors and mix them together and put a lot of it and get like a really like toned down silver in my spec. So what you want to do is go to your white and probably do outlines of everything. Just outline everything. And you can see how the brick white is coming out pretty nicely. Around it as if it was just, you know, like a liar shadow to it. That's basically what Brick White is. It's a shadow color for lighter shadows. And it works great with white. Really great with white. In my opinion, it does. If you want to use it for another color or another way, like I said, I can't stop it. So, see how it's bringing out the character? Now, the white still looks a little dull. So what I'm going to do is take the chisel part, or if you had a brush side, I'm going to just do like hash marks. It doesn't have to be perfect, it's just being what you want it. Okay, and then I continue on with this. And then I do outlines all along the white part. Now be careful when you're doing it, because sometimes the colors will mix together. Then you get like a clunky reddish, or say right here, I'm probably if I went inside on accident and come back out, I would get a funky reddish you know, color and it would not look good. Now I go back to my 50% gray and go a little outline on the fur, like areas I want it to be, like I want to probably do probably like little strokes on the gray white that I made. And then put some little details everywhere. Probably around the eyes is a very important part. Give it some gray, just make it pop out a lot. And then let me go back to where is it? Uh, my, my brick one. Probably, probably do that. I'm not calling the whole thing in, but do that. And then for the little blue. Now where do you think blue's gonna go? It's gonna go up here with the propeller shot. So I just color in this very lightly. Not like crazy. Now, this is a coping marker. I will explain how to use these another time. Now it's a character. Your own custom Five Nights of Freddy character. Okay. Now coloring the background is optional. So if you want to color the background that gray, not me, I'm gonna color it. So the color I'm gonna use is a Copic marker for a screen. Just gonna, gonna probably do a basic outline of him. So what what works best for me when you're using a Copic marker is to use the chisel side. But like I said, I will explain how to use these another time when you're doing these videos. So what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna outline this guy best I can. Try to be as careful as possible, especially when you're going around the white areas. Or, you know, if it's black or gray, it's great. It, it's okay if you go inside the line a little bit. It's hard for it to show up, but say you're going inside the white or the red area, and it's going to bleed through a little bit and you can notice it. But like I said, just say it was intended. 
but you can't do then, you know, just say it was an accident. Though I did say earlier that, just say it was intended, some things you can't say that for. And this is one of them. So, go in. Maybe you go on. And, you know, it still looks kind of a little, it looks a little better. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to add another shade green, Prisma Color Grass Green, and I'm going to do like hash marks. It may look like the same color, and it might be. It's just because the companies have different names for these colors. But it adds like depth to your character. So, let's keep going with this. And let's see. Doesn't matter how many hash marks you put. Really does not matter. So you want to do polka dot, spirals, and all that. Any pattern. That's really the rule. If you're gonna do what I did here, you gotta have a pattern to it. You can put a background to it. That will take longer. But if you want to, go for it. But if you're doing what I did, just do an outline and do something to it. But a pattern. And I think that's it. That's it for this little guy. Um, let's give him a name. Um, since he is a pink one, you know, try to think of something that would, you know, go with it. You know, so like Patrick or, you know, Penelope or something. But since this is a boy, we'll probably go with something comical. Since it is supposed to be a funny looking character. I'll go with um, Poppy, the pink one. Now, I, I think that name's already been used, but you no, know, probably, probably those other characters' names were used. You know, I think Foxy the fox name was probably used in somewhere else, or Foxy the pirate. I don't know. Poppy, the pink one. And then I just put little lines on there, so emphasize on it. And then, last but not least, signature. You need, if you're going to do a piece, make your own signature. So what you're going to do, well, not my signature, but just make a signature. Make like a fun little quick duel that you can do under five seconds. And you have to put your name so people can tell. Or you can put like a shortened version or your initials. Me, I do my initial, DNA. And I will not say what that stands for. I'll probably reveal it some other time in the future. Okay, so we got our own Five Nights at Freddy character, Poppy the Penguin. If you enjoyed this video, click likes on underneath the video or leave a comment on it. Probably suggesting what I should do to fix the video or to improve on my next tutorial. And, you know, if you don't like it, that's cool with me. I don't really care. No, I'm just trying this out. This is the first tutorial ever. I know. So if you liked it, click subscribe. You know, I'll, I'll be busting out videos every week as long as I can. Alright, see y'all.